Hello everyone and welcome to the Love and Times talk from the hut. The pandemic has been really hard on all of us. Cooped up in our homes, cut off from our families. We've had a really really difficult time. And the one thing that has really helped us has been social media. It has allowed us to connect with our family and with our friends. It has also kept us updated about what's going on in the world. And lastly, of course, the entertainment part. However, social media has a downside to it. It's not all rosy, it's not all good. Like everything, there is a negative side to it. To talk more about this, we have with us Dr. Abhijit Natkarni. Dr. Natkarni Thank you very much for coming on our show and welcome to Thanks, our show. Thanks, Maria. Doctor, you are an Associate Professor of Global Mental Health at the London College. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did I miss out anything? Uh, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. London but yeah, almost hygiene. geographically you got there. London <laughs> School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So, Doctor, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your work. Sure. Uh, first of all, Maria, thanks for having me on this program and, and for this interesting topic that we are going to delve into in, in a short while. Um, about me, um, I'm an addiction psychiatrist, so I'm a medical doctor trained in addiction psychiatry. And I'm also what we call as a global mental health researcher. Uh, I'm based out of London and Goa, so I'm back and forth between uh, the, the two countries, India and the UK. And a lot of my work in more recent times, besides the little clinical work that I do as a psychiatrist, uh, a lot of my work has been around uh, developing interventions, psychological interventions, which can be delivered by what we call as non-specialist health workers or lay counselors to increase access to these treatments for larger populations within uh, countries like India where we have uh, low resources in terms of uh, uh, people who can deliver such interventions. And so we try to do this through innovative methods to increase access to uh, psychological interventions for low resource settings like India. So a lot of my work is uh, around that. But I guess today I'm sitting here in my uh, role or with my hat of an addiction psychiatrist. So yes, of course. But even in in the in the field of addiction i think you are coming up with a lot of um, you know ways to help people am i right yeah uh, so uh, again there there are when when we talk about uh, psychiatry or, or or doctors we think about medications for for a range of mental health problems as well as addictions as you said but uh, a larger chunk of of the treatments for a lot of these problems including addictions are psychological treatments uh, which are not so uh, easily available in settings like ours and and and, and so uh, as i said uh, a lot of the work that i do in terms of research, but also a lot of the work that uh, we do here as an organization, Sangat, the NGO that I'm based here in, in India, uh, in terms of clinical services, is around providing psychological treatments for a range of mental health problems, including addictions. All right. So, as I said in my introduction, that there is a downside to social media. I mean, it has been a boon. You know it, I know it, and our viewers know it. But there is a downside. What, according to you, is this downside? Uh, lots of downside, but, but I'm glad you started off by uh, elaborating on the positives of social media because we don't want to be going on a witch hunt here today and saying not social media all. is not good at all not and, and at we all. should kind of ban it. We don't want to go down Our that route. Will kill it. <coughs> yeah, oh, and, 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 and interestingly, I mean, we wouldn't have been <coughs> able to do this program if you didn't have social media because you are kind of running this on face, Facebook Live and, and, and so your viewers are joining you on Facebook Live, I assume. So without social media, we wouldn't have had this program. So there are benefits to it, which you have rightly pointed out. But um, as with anything that is, 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 has benefits, 
uh, which means that a lot of people will be using it. As with anything like that, there's always going to be downsides. And uh, this this is not about um, kind of uh, highlighting the downside just for the sake of highlighting the downsides, but so that we can uh, make our viewers and people aware of it. And when you're aware of things, you can take action when things start going wrong. When you're not aware of issues, you can't do anything when things start going wrong. So it's a first step is acknowledgement absolutely acknowledgement always that there is a problem absolutely and not just with this with anything, anything right in yeah life. anything in life yeah we, if yes. we don't acknowledge the problem we can't solve absolutely. it absolutely so to come back coming back to your question maria about what are the downsides i mean there are quite a lot of downsides uh maybe we could just spend the next uh, uh 45 minutes or so just talking about the downsides but i don't want to no, take all of briefly. that time yeah exactly so i don't want to take all of that time we would love so, to have you no yeah. doubt about it <laughs> we would love yeah but but we need to uh -huh. we need to discuss other things as well. So, if we were to briefly look at uh, things which are uh, which people know more about, which are uh, more serious. So, for example, internet addiction or social media addiction. You know, you get so involved in it that it takes over your life. But that is to a certain extent a tip of the iceberg or, or a very small proportion of people will get it. There are other issues that affect a lot more uh, and a, a quite a larger number of people as compared to things like social media addiction. So for example, what could these things be? Uh, sleep. A lot of people spend a lot of time in the evenings before going to bed on social media. That definitely interferes with the amount of sleep that you get because you're getting getting less sleep, but also the quality of sleep because being on a device that stimulates your brain, which with its bright light, is going to interfere with your sleep patterns, and then so sleep is affected. Uh, other things that 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 get up and, and that has a knock-on effect on the rest of your day, but but the other kind of um, things which are a bit more insidious and, 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 and you don't see them so clearly are things such as uh, uh, what you might call as uh, the highlight reels of people's lives. Right? When you're on social media, you get to see of all your friends, uh, so-called friends on social media, is the highlight reels of their lives. What is the best in their lives? Everything is filtered. Which means that you are now not seeing the, their lives as it really is and you are seeing your own life as it really is and you are comparing it to the highlight reels and thinking that you are not good enough as compared to others. Your life is not as good enough as others. And this can lead to a lot of problems and then some of the commonest uh, problems, mental health problems that have been associated with excessive use of social media are anxiety and depression. Now uh, again, we don't have time to go into the finer nuances of this because we do because there are arguments uh, for and against it. Because does does social media cause anxiety and depression, or are people more who are more prone to anxiety and depression more likely to use social media? We don't really so know. So it's basically a vicious cycle, isn't it, it? It 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 is. I mean, you don't know the direction of the uh, of the associations. What is causing what, or whether it's both associations. So these are just a few things. I and mean, there are a lot of other things that are happening with social media which we could discuss as we go along but right. just a kind of this is just just the surface we're just scraping the surface with this right right uh, for our audience for our viewers just to let you know we are live and dr natkarni is more than happy to answer any of your queries your doubts so send them to us and we will address them as they come so doctor getting back to you you said uh, one area that really affects our life is sleep deprivation right and the second one is this comparison that we do and we keep forgetting that what is portrayed is not true it is it is just portrayed and we compare our lives so besides this how else which are uh, another two three areas where you know social media has taken over and has affected our life sure so uh, so the other thing, other point you would think about is what I would call a social currency. What is what 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 is this? People on social media, especially certain kinds of social media like uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, etc., uh, deal in this social currency. And what do we mean by that? Is basically we get satisfaction from the likes that we get on the posts that we make. We get satisfaction from the shares that we get on the posts that we make. We get satisfaction from the positive comments that are made on the posts and, and the photographs uh, that, that we put out there. And, and, and so we are basically uh, putting our self-worth 
our appreciation of ourselves or self satisfaction in a paradigm which is determined by someone else true so we are basically what we are doing is we are giving others the power to decide exactly. how we feel exactly i mean that's wonderfully put so which means that we don't have any control over it anymore if i want to feel good if i want to feel happy it's not up to me right it's it's up to other people and that's that's not the real world that's not the real world at all so so that social currency is is another big thing that you have to think about when it comes to social media then there is this very interestingly named term by young people called fomo this is fear of missing out so this is basically kind of this worry anxiety about missing out on opportunities missing out on events not being there at parties not being at certain events that are happening and how do you come to know about this you come to know the, about this social media you see a friend of yours at a party you see friend of yours at 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 an, and could say a, a music event and you're thinking oh i i could not be there i was not there and so this fear of missing out on things is is making people especially young people but also seeing it increasingly in 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 older adults as well this uh, this is building up anxiety and and that's again something to think about and the other uh, last last thing that i would highlight would be cyber bullying now uh, there's a lot of that happening Uh, at at all age levels but especially with young people now uh, why is it a problem uh, because bullying has been happening for ages now and even when there was no social media bullying used to happen sure. now the problem with cyber bullying is that you can't get away from it let's assume that a, 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 a young person is getting bullied at the educational institution at the end of the day when the school ends they can go back home. home yeah so you are then cut off or you can walk away from the bullying if someone is bullying you with cyber bullying it you can't walk away from it because you are on social media all the time uh, and and whatever the bullying is happening remains on social media for a long period of time right if someone body shames you it's there on social media it's not going anywhere and you see it all the time other people pick up on it other people comment on it so you can't run away from it then the other thing about cyber bullying is if bullying is happening in the real world to a certain extent there is some amount of uh, oversight uh, of parents and supervision and, and uh, teachers in the real world who can do something to end it whereas the world of social media is is not regulated in that way so for most most young people uh their parents might not be on social media or might not be on the latest social media that young people are on and so they they don't know what's happening unless a young person tells them and so i think that's that's the second issue about cyber bullying first one is you can't get away from it and and, and second one is th- there's no no one to stop it and 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 there is a certain amount of and i won't call it anonymity but a distance from it so if you are the perpetrator there is a certain amount of distance from it which which kind of allows you to get into that mob mentality right like how do mobs operate mobs operate because you feel that there is anonymity if there are two people you are less likely to kind of let's say punch the other person but if there are 100 people there is that safety in numbers and and so you kind of tend to become more aggressive that's how mobs operate and the same thing happens on social media there is a certain amount of of distance from the victim you don't realize what's happening what the victim is experiencing what the victim is going through and so you you tend to be more aggressive and there are more people who kind of then join in whereas when you are with the person sometimes when you see that it's distressing the person in front of you there's a likelihood of you kind of toning it down or stopping but with social media you don't see that because you are away from that person so i think these are a few other things that we need to be mindful of and thinking about when we talk about the downsides of social media So basically you are saying that you know the physical presence of the perpetrator we let's call the person the perpetrator for now so this physical absence is what gives him or her the strength and multiplies and magnifies uh, you know the power that he or she has over the the person who they are abusing absolutely absolutely isn't that what yeah. you're saying yeah. you also mentioned that fomo is something that is more prevalent in in youngsters than it is in adults but you said there is this trend where even adults are getting um, involved and affected how how far 
uh, has that come? Like, how, what percentage would you say, approximately, I'm not asking you for exact figures, but approximately, how, what is a percentage you've seen, or that increase that you've seen, that even adults, like you and me and everyone who's watching, are getting affected by this? You're putting on me on the spot, Maria, to, to give numbers to this. I, I, I would not give numbers to it, but I, I usually, when I speak about this, I, I use my uh, uh, personal experience. Pers personal experience, yes, and not, not my professional experience, no, personal, don't, don't. my personal experience. Uh, as you can see, I, I'm, I'm old as well. I'm not a young person anymore. So when, when I was a young person, ages ago, uh, the the thing the social media to Just be on are you fishing for compliments because if no no i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm not amazing not at all not at all i mean i can't i'm with this white beard i can't but 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 what i'm saying is when when i was young and when social media was kind of picking up so to say facebook was the social media to be on the the app to be on right, right? what i'm seeing now is people of my age have moved on to something else. People who are younger to me have moved on to something else, Insta and, and Snapchat, etc. And people from the older generation, so I see my aunts and uncles now on Facebook. Okay. No, so you, you know, so there's that kind of an evolution. But also the fact that when you come into this game, so to say, lo late, you don't really understand it so well because it's not something that you have grown up with. Right? You, you, you look at little kids now, I mean, people, young, small kids in their prams with a smartphone, they are born with this. They are born with this function, right? I mean, they, they know how to do it. They're born with the yeah, finger moving like this. Exactly. Right? They're born with that. <laughs> so it's an, I think it's an evolutionary phenomenon. I yes. don't know. But, but with but, but, but with older people, uh, they, they kind of not, uh, so uh, without being ageist about it, this is an observation, they are not savvy and don't understand the limitations of social media, uh, etc. And, 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 and so you might find that uh, some of these issues my, that they experience might be different from, from, from what younger people are experiencing. So for example, uh, the 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 news or, or the messages that they get on WhatsApp and and the ability to kind of say no this is not credible this is credible uh, to distinguish between yeah to, to, to yes. taking things at face value because they have grown up trusting the information that they have been getting right and and so you can blame them and they they have got uh, information all their lives from trustworthy sources most of the time and and now you are suddenly kind of uh, you are getting this delusion of information and you you have to be on your toes all the time trying to figure out what is what is real what is not what is facts what is fake etc and 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 so they tend to get kind of misled or caught up in in, in this a, a lot more than uh, younger people who are a lot more clued on not to say that they can't fall victims to it but a lot more clued on to what might be trusted and uh, what can be trusted and what should not be trusted so they're very very savvy they they are they know for okay this doesn't look very uh, legit yeah. you know in fact uh, most of the time, I'm sure there are many of our viewers who have that problem as well. I do not know what am I supposed to do when I go on Facebook and I actually have to ask my daughter, okay, now next what? Do I click? And she's like, don't, don't click. If you click, it means that you've seen that picture. Do you want the person to see that picture? And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. You know, I don't yeah. know. I don't want that. Yeah. So it is like, if you click, that means that person is aware. For example, I clicked on some picture of you, uh, Twitter or Instagram or whatever, just to look at it and just to see if you've really become old as you say or you're still young. <laughs> and then you come to know that, that I have seen your picture. And it is like, oh, so she saw my picture. <laughs> So there are people who do not, uh, you know, who don't know how to go about it. So the older generation, of course, as I said, and you're right, there are a lot of uncles and aunties, I'm not saying I'm not putting them down in any way, but who have now become rather savvy with IT. They know what to do and what not to do. Youngsters are the most savviest, of course. My next question to you is, you say that it is the youngsters, the the majority, that, that big chunk of users are youngsters. Now is this only in India or is it worldwide? Now I'm asking this question, I'm not putting you on the spot, 
you blame me for that mm. but the thing is you travel a lot before the before the show you spoke to me and you said you know you go to london and you go to many places so you must uh, see around i'm asking you from your experience not as a doctor per se but from your experience of traveling all around the world do you see this phenomena only um, you know in india or only in some countries or is it universal i think it's universal i mean whatever i have seen of the world i mean i have not seen all the world but whatever i have seen of the world i i, I see this phenomenon uh, everywhere the extent of it might vary i mean because it depends it depends on on cultures it depends on uh, accessibility uh, to data and and all of those things which 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 define and and and, and also uh, what i see is in, in in the public space i mean i i, I don't go into people's homes when i'm traveling uh, so to see what's happening in homes but but i think it's it's kind of uh, happening across the world the extent might vary so for example to give you an example of uh uh how things have evolved let's say in in london since the first time i went there and what i see now so traveling on the tube the underground there in in in, in london when i first uh went there what used to impress me was most people sitting uh, or kind of standing in 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 in, in the tube carriages um, would be reading and they would be reading real books as in books paper books uh, or newspapers and 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 i was really impressed with that i mean like you you are in transit by using your time efficiently by reading now what i see is most people are on their phones now they might be reading on their phones as well i mean i'm not saying that they are they kind of doing anything else which is uh, which is uh, not productive they might be reading on their phones because now you you can read books on your phones or there are people with kindles who are reading books but 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 uh, but that is a thing that i have noticed and 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 i would assume that so at least some of that time is spent on social media so so there is that evolution that's happening my um my fervent hope i'm uh, in the little bit of little optimistic bit of my brain is that all of this is a cycle uh people have moved from uh individual level human contact communication to this big focus on social media communication i believe at some point people will start realizing that that has its limitations and you come back, come back to again. human communication that that that's that's my fervent hope and i think i mean as with a lot of uh uh, uh trends and fads they have a cycle uh, now this this trend has been going on for a long period of time obviously but usually they go they kind of travel in cycles so i would hope that at some point there if there, there's going to be some kind of balance that will come into into, into this right i want to um you know i um from the little uh, that i've been interacting with people there are two incidents that come to mind one is um i have been uh, before the pandemic been to i had gone to a restaurant in panjim itself and there was this family of uh, they were five of them and uh, they had ordered their food and they were waiting and gradually all of them took off took out their phones and were on their phone they were in a restaurant they'd come i suppose for a family meal or whatever it was but it was very disheartening to see that all of them were on their phones and there was no talking happening that was one incident another incident uh, let me take it close to home for example my home you know i don't know very often people they want to say something to you and invariably they send it in messages they type it rather than pick up the phone and speak now i am different of course i in the sense that i'm not putting anyone down it's just that i rather speak with people i feel that the connect is much more it's faster it's easier i say what i have to say instead of sitting back and clarifying the person says what and i'm saying no 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 this and then again the person sends back so there's a lot of back and forth whereas with the phone you pick up the phone you speak and say whatever you want to and you're done with now why is this inclination to you know use social media more than talking to people why is this happening what is it that has happened is happening that is affecting <coughs> us 
and you know isolating us from people even though we are sitting next to each other what so i'll pro probably s start off with the easier bit of it which is which is um which I said right at the outset, we don't want to be dissing social media for everything. So, so there are going to be times when it's more efficient to use other modes of communication yes, than picking up the there, phone. That's a given. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a given. So, keeping that aside, when we are not saying that ev everything should happen face to face and 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 and, and through verbal communication, uh, but but this thing that you spoke about the families is is not unusual. I mean, I see that quite a lot, and it, it's very striking, and and, and it worries me as well. Uh, the the whole family is sitting at, at the table in a restaurant while they wait for the food to arrive. Everyone is on their own uh, phones doing their own thing. I, th I think one of the reasons that is happening is, is because it's a lot easier to do communicate on social media. It does not require effort like it does with face-to-face uh, -face human communication because uh, to do that you have to be first of all uh, focused and attentive. You need to be listening to what the other person is saying, absorbing that, reflecting on it and kind of taking the conversation forward. You need to be uh, really interested in what the other person is saying and the other person's life. Uh, you, you you can't, uh, if, if you get bored, you can't just switch, switch on to off. the next page or go to the next, uh, uh, whatever, next next social media app. You, you have to be there and you have to be present. And that requires effort. That a requires, lot of effort. It requires a lot of effort. It requires emotional effort. It requires uh, psychological or cognitive effort to be present and to be able to do that. Where social media allows you uh, not to put in that effort. You could just be kind of changing pages or you could be some thinking something else while you're doing that. If you're bored with something, you go on to something else. You're having a WhatsApp conversation with a friend. You kind of feel bored. You just stop it and, 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 and do something else. And so I think it's, it's, it's the ease of having communications or doing communications with social media which kind of takes or draws people to it uh, and, and, and and I think it, it's a vicious cycle right I mean it's 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 conditioning the more you kind of do it and, and the more you realize how easy it is uh, the more you do it right okay so basically what you're saying is talking to people requires effort absolutely so I think we need to put more effort because we've realized during the pandemic how important relationships are. Effort, effort and more effort is what I would say. Um, you have spoken about it earlier and you said, I think the term you used was social real highlights. Highlights real, yeah. Social highlights real. Now, why is it that we get so affected by it we m some of us know i think 80 percent of us know that what is being showed and portrayed on on social media is not all true they show you just the glossy side and they glorify it but still we know that we know that there are people we know who've had a major you know break up either with their boyfriend they've had a divorce there's a death in the family but two three days later they put a nice picture smiling and things like that and you're thinking mm, how is that possible but still it affects you why what is it what is it that you know catches attention and and draws us into that circle what so i think uh first of all we get used to interacting and 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 um, communicating and understanding the public facade of a person when we kind of interact through social media rather than the actual persona behind that facade that's one and social media allows you to put that facade up because uh, everything is filtered yes everything is filtered now uh, that that brings to the fore uh, a kind of a psychological theory about uh, how people look at themselves so there is me and what I am there is me and what I want to be that's my aspiration and there is me and what society and other people expect, expect me to be the bigger the gap between these like the bigger the gap between what I am and what I want to be and the bigger the gap between what I am and what society expects to me the more distress you're going to experience 
right? So, so if if let's say, for example, uh, I want to have, or, or, or I I I have a, a normal body, a regular lay person's body, uh, but what what I see on social media is bronzed men with six packs. I'm, I'm kind of talking about an yes, ex yes, extreme, yes, of but uh, if people in my circle, so to say, on social media, are like that, most then, of them, if most you're of saying, them are like right. that, yeah, then that's what I would want to be. And if everything that's around me glorifies Greek god looks, then that's what I am pressured to become. But that's not what I am. But there's such a huge gap that that it distresses me, and 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 then I tend to um, filter myself, or filter what I put out put there, up. so that I I want to um, portray what's not me. And I think that's a, a a big problem, and and that's what's most distressing because what you see is just the highlight reels, as I said. Of of people's lives, it's it's like it's like watching uh, a, a a highlight reel of a, a test match, cricket test match. You know, you, you you finish it within an hour, and you see only the best bits of it, right? I mean, the boundaries, the wickets, etc. And look, it it looks all exciting, but you don't see the five days of boring cricket that happens between those, where your people are toiling at it, working hard at getting the wickets or or trying to hit the boundaries. You miss out on that, and 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 so you you're aspiring for a life which has only those boundaries and the wickets. So you're not you're not understanding that real life is not that. Real life is five days of dreary hard work on the field under the sun. That's what we we don't realize when we kind of decide how we want our life to be. So, in other words, we do not, and we should not just portray the highlights of our life because <coughs> excuse me because more than the highlights like doctor said there is a lot of running about between the wickets there is a lot of running about to uh, to the boundary and back so it is not just that and we should not get affected by it am i right did i put it right absolutely all right absolutely. then you have spoken about the of course as doctor said and as i have said we are not putting down social media because social media has been a boon we are only telling and we are speaking about this these are our opinions and we are just speaking about how it can be negative you have spoken about some of the adverse effects of social media which according to you again i'm putting him on the spot which according to you is the most I would have said destructive, but I think it's a little too strong a word. But which is the one which affects people the most? I think the one which uh, affects people uh, the most is is where you determine your self worth and your value based on externalities of other people's or, or other people's lives, and 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 again just uh, snapshots of other people's lives, not the whole life. And, and I think aspiring to be something that you are not and aspiring to be something that you sh there is no need for you to be that is 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 probably the most uh, destructive because that is a cause for a uh, lot of uh, uh, distress and especially it's a cause of a uh, lot of distress because a lot of these things are outside of your control and when you focus on externalities which are not in your control you are more likely to experience distress so for example if if you if you if you see uh, a friend of yours going on 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 a on a uh, world tour puts up photographs now you could afford it and so you will go so then there's no problem but if you can't afford it it's not something within your immediate control right you can't just if you can't afford it get up and go tomorrow for a for a world tour now the moment you start focusing on, on on that something which is not within your control it's going to cause distress and so to me if you ask me the the most destructive to use an extreme word of 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 this is is that uh 
thinking or thought processes where you determine your self-worth based on what you see on social media. So we need to look at the whole picture again. We are coming back to the same thing. We need to look at the big picture and not just the trailer of the movie and say, oh, you know, my life is not good enough. I think all our lives are good enough. We are blessed to be alive, especially during these times. Coming to, to my next question, you did speak about cyberbullying. And you said cyberbullying is rather rampant. Of course, today with the pandemic and things, it has, uh, I, I'm sure, come down a bit. But, you know, when things are normal, we hear so many, so many sad stories that come to a very sad end about cyberbullying and how it affects people, and especially youngsters. Now, what makes youngsters so susceptible? You spoke once was the, the physical, you know, uh, presence and the physical distance. With, uh, in normal situations. But in cyberbullying, you said the first thing is that the person is, uh, you know, has um, anonymity, and that is why it is easier. But what is this about the victim, about the person who is being bullied, that makes him so susceptible to get bullied? What is going on in his or her mind or environment that is making them so susceptible? I would not say that at all Maria because by saying this we are doing victim blaming we are basically saying that there is something in you which makes you susceptible to bullying I think by doing that we are doing a lot of injustice to the person who experiences bullying and we are also letting the perpetrator of the hook you know this this reminds me of the common uh, refrain people have when uh, a woman talks about experiencing intimate partner violence you don't you don't talk about there being something wrong with the perpetrator you say probably you are not doing something right because of which your husband is beating you so it's it's not you, we can't be shifting the blame on 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 the on, on the victim no, doctor i'm not shifting the blame i am just saying we spoke about the perpetrator and we said the perpetrator perpetrator you know has anonymity has as his or her shield he is and she is to be blamed, no doubt about it. There is absolutely no doubt about it. But what I am saying is, why or what is making them, affecting them so much more that they take such, you know, extreme steps, some students, some children, why is that so? I, th I, th I think one of, one of the things is, is the fact that um, they see the virtual world as the real world and they find it difficult to get out of it. But if we were to kind of pin some kind of responsibility on, on what is going wrong, then we need to pin the responsibility uh, on parents. We need to pin the responsibility I'm on- I'm sure uh, parents on watching are waiting for you to come out of the studio. <laughs> and I, I'll elaborate on this and, and, and <laughs> pin the responsibility on teachers. And, 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 and I'll tell you no, why. No, I do agree. I do and agree. And I'll tell you why. A young person who is experiencing bullying, cyberbullying, should feel comfortable enough and trust the parents and the teachers to come out and tell them about it. Now if they are not doing that, then we are failing in our responsibilities as parents and teachers for not building that trust for not having had those conversations with young people when they were much younger and when you could have said, listen, I mean, these are the kind of things that can happen on social media. Uh, you have to be mindful of those. And if, you, if, you, if they happen to you, you should feel absolutely comfortable to come to me and talk to me about it. And I'll understand and I'll try to help you. If we, were, if we had built that kind of trust as teachers, as parents, then the young person would have come and spoken to us about it. But right now the situation is such that they don't believe that the parents or the teachers would one, understand what this is all about, and two, even if they understood, could do anything to help me. And so I think it's important for us to also take responsibility for the extreme actions that sometimes young people take when they are bullied on the internet and, and, and on social media because they don't see a way out, because they don't see or think of anyone who can help them. 
and who, who, who are the adults who can actually help them? It's the teachers, the parents, etc. And so that's something that uh, uh, parents and teachers need to be thinking about because there are other young people coming up, the next generations, and we need to be kind of correcting some of uh, these mistakes, one of, one of which being, uh, being up to date about social media. That's because if we don't know what it is, I was just coming to that yeah. because I would like to speak on, on, on behalf of all the parents and teachers who are watching. Half the time, we don't know what to do. Should we scroll left, right, up, down? You know, it's a dilemma, it's yeah. truly a dilemma. And we're thinking, what do we do next? Yeah. And our children, our students are so tech savvy, they know they have like hundred times you know smarter than us where this is concerned so for parents for parents it's very and teachers I'm saying it's very difficult because we first and foremost don't even know what's happening on the social media scene but yes you are right when you say that the connect is very important between parents and children now with students and teachers again it's a very gray spot doctor I mean I am speaking on behalf of teachers again, saying we have a class of 45, 50, 52. So how do we keep a track? I mean, the class finishes, with the, the lesson finishes, the lecture finishes, and you are off to the next class. You do not have time to even <sighs> breathe. You have to run up steps, you have to run down steps. You're just in a hurry. There is no time. So isn't the crunch of time also another reason for this? No, oh, absolutely, Maria. I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, when I say this, I'm not blaming teachers at all. No, okay? I'm I'm, I'm, what, I, what I'm saying is that it's, it's, it's not an, an issue that a young person can deal with herself alone. or himself. Yeah, they need help, uh, someone who can help them. But I'm also mindful of the fact that our systems are flawed. I mean, we, we, we don't have a perfect system. I mean, uh, uh, teachers don't have time. There are too many students in the classroom. Uh, the, uh, what happens in the classroom is, is an extreme focus on, on completing the syllabus so to say, uh, rather than getting to know the young person, uh, how they think, what they want, what their needs are, what their desires are, completely agree. I mean, there, there's no doubts about that. That our system is flawed, um, and and and. Uh, I, I don't have the solution to this. I no, I, I'm not no. saying that uh, th there's some magic pill and, and, and the teachers will be able to do all of this. I think they just need to put in an effort. That's not to say that uh, teachers are, are not putting in efforts. They are, they are teachers who put in effort to kind of interact with young people and get to know them and understand them. It's just a matter of kind of uh, doing that and, and working within the limitations of our systems. I mean, I, I'm not saying that uh, overnight things will become perfect and then all of this can be solved. But making that effort is very important is what I'm saying. I mean, I, I understand that uh, because technology evolves so fast, I mean, by the time, let's say, uh, I get to understand Insta, I mean, There's young people are on something else, else right? Yes, absolutely. So, so, so we, we, I mean, it's, it's all a game of catching up on these things. Uh, uh, but um, I think what's important is, is the intent and the effort. You don't have to become an expert on Instagram, but you, you need to know what Instagram is and what it does and what, what happens on Instagram. I think that that should be sufficient to have these kind of conversations because then you understand what can go with wrong with these kind of social media. You can't, you can't become an expert on it overnight. No, no. Yeah. no but but getting all. to know it so that uh, you can know its downsides and have these conversations with young people is extremely important. And I think also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you uh, as a doctor, now you're in the right position to answer this, okay, that there should be frequent talks about, about uh, you know, the adverse effects of uh, social media and uh, with students and the schools and colleges should have that. Would you agree uh, with that? Absolutely. I mean, <coughs> as I said, I think I said uh, right at the outset when we started talking about this, or, or before we started this, I don't remember now. But but I think to to uh, resolve any problem, first we have to be mindful or become aware that it's a problem. The awareness yeah. and so the acceptance. Exactly. So the first step is awareness. Second step is acceptance, and the next step is like now I need to think what I can do about this, right? And and so yeah, I mean absolutely. I mean uh, having. Uh, 
not just talks but i mean you could actually use social media to kind of build awareness about these things as Absolutely. well uh, but but building awareness about these issues uh, not just amongst young people but also parents teachers i mean society in general is 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 very very important because if they are aware of it then they'll become mindful of it and when things start going wrong they'll say okay i i don't think this is now right i need to do something about it you know you said that the solution is not just one thing there are many you know uh, th there's a lot of logistics to it and i think this is a responsibility of not just a parent and not just a teacher i think it is our responsibility as a society together we need to come up with something uh, i would like to um, give you an example of how children are so protective of their privacy you know so when someone is on their phones children we are talking about uh, i have, i'm giving an example of my nephew this was about 4 5 years ago he must have been about 7 6 7 my goodness he be upset i don't know his I remember his age but he was on his phone and i went to see and he's like what are you doing and i'm like uh, just checking what what is it say ah oh, can you leave me alone and let me do what i want to do he used that tone with me he actually did and i was like wow i mean just 6 or 7 and look this is the attitude okay stay away don't <laughs> let me do what i have to so you know children are not allowing their parents to enter that little world of their own and also another addiction is um, i i've heard i'm i'm not i don't know of any you know real life cases but i've heard so many people say that children are now taking to pornography very easily i mean it's all there it's at the press of a button it's just all there and they can and they do get addicted uh, what are your views about this doctor so i mean i first of all i'm pretty impressed with your nephew i mean like 7 years old and he understands privacy i mean that yeah. it's really good uh, we should we shouldn't call it bad i mean understanding other people's privacy and not being intrusive is understanding it at that but age seven, that's yeah, really no. good <laughs> no but yeah but but that's good i mean because if he understands his own privacy he will also understand he should understand other people's privacy as well and and not be intrusive but i think uh what's important in situations like this is for parents to be able to set boundaries i mean there are things that you can do and there are things for a 7 year old there are things that you cannot do so i understand your need for privacy i understand that you need to kind of what do certain things on your mobile phone by yourself but for you to have that privilege i need because you are young i need to know what it is that you are doing i don't need to know exactly what it is but i need to know what apps you are accessing i i need i need to have control over that to a certain extent uh, uh, these are the kind of conversations that you need to have with young people it's not about uh setting uh unilateral rules and saying this is this what is you should it. do then you become a despot exactly you know? <laughs> then it becomes problematic because the way young people are hardwired if you tell them not to do something they're more likely to do it right True. so it's important to have this balanced conversations with young people and and, and young people are not unreasonable i mean they they will have a conversation it's a negotiation that you have and you say you get your privacy but there are boundaries, boundaries. to this privacy and the reason for the boundaries to this privacy are these so for example let's say there might be cyber bullying or, or whatever so there is a rational right you are not saying you do this because i am the adult i am saying so exactly you can't be autocratic yeah, and exactly. say no exactly no. you you do this because this is the logic and the rational for it so this is how it kind of takes so your other question about pornography i think uh uh i would kind of just kind of uh make this a broader discussion because um what is social media social media is a tool we have been doing all of the things that you have been doing in social media from the beginning of time which is what interact with each other communicate with each other uh, say bad names to each other say good things about uh, oneself uh, uh, etc all of that have been happening since the beginning of time since human being started communicating the only difference is now you are doing it through social media so social media is the tool we it, it's it's a tool for human beings to do all the good and bad things that we are doing even before social media the only difference probably is the fact that 
uh, as I said about cyberbullying as well, you can't run away from it. Uh, it's ubiquitous. It's there everywhere. Uh, and uh, it, it does not respect the boundaries of geography, time, etc., which human beings did in their face-to-face -face interactions. So being able, if, we, if we are able to control some of those aspects of the tool, then it's not any different from what was happening before. And so any solutions that we try to find are around controlling those aspects, which is the ubiquitousness of the, the tool and, and the, the lack of boundaries in terms of time, geography, etc. And then we should be good. You know, um, maybe it's coincidence. I don't know. Yesterday, I was scrolling through Netflix and I came across this movie. I don't know if you, the viewers have seen this called Snowden. Snowden, Snowden. It is about this um, hacker in the United States who brought to light how even our private chats are not private and everything is out there in the open. I mean, it, it you know, we've heard about it, yeah, okay, but it, it actually, I was looking at it face to face and then I just realized, oh my goodness, there's so much that's happening that even when your laptop, you have switched it on, the camera can come on. I mean, this is extreme scenarios, of course, but I'm just giving you an example of how we are so vulnerable. It's not just children. We are vulnerable ourselves to it. And this idea of privacy is actually not it's just some fantasy in our mind, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely uh, a, a fantasy in our minds. Um, once you are on the internet, nothing is private. Absolutely. I mean, I, I might be kind of putting out an extreme scenario or a doomsday scenario here, but I mean, once you are on the net, nothing is private. The only way you can remain private, if you really want it to remain private, is completely go off the grid. I mean, there should be nothing on the internet. But that's not possible in the modern world, true, isn't it? True. But yeah, it's 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 it's, uh, it's we just like to uh, comfort ourselves, saying that we have these privacy settings, and and we kind of don't allow uh, certain photographs to be seen by everyone, but only by friends, etc. In the right hands, or or you would say the wrong hands, anything that you think it can private, be explosive. Exactly. It can be explosive. You know, we had a guest on our show uh, the last time. I hope he's listening, um, Lou Coutinho. And he spoke about social media detox. And he said, we detox ourselves because of the foods, uh, you know, uh, of the things that we eat and drink. But we also need a detox from um, social media. I tried it. Very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I did it for a few hours, and then it was like, "You're right." You know, it's like, "Oh my God, what if there is an important message that's coming? What if uh, something bad has happened, and I need to be there?" I mean, I think I'm an angel. Uh, you know, supposed to be there every time when something bad happens. But I think that is most of our reaction that we cannot literally, literally cut ourselves that umbilical cord to the social media so strong, so strong. That's very difficult, isn't it? Have you ever tried, I'm just asking, I'm not putting you on the spot, please, please, please. <laughs> I have never felt the need to do that uh, because uh, I am not on social media to an extent where I would be worried about it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and not, not, not because of anything spectacular that I'm doing, but it's, it's not something that, uh, excites me so much. I mean, I, I'll be on Twitter. I mean, Twitter is something that I use quite often. But the other things are, I mean, I have a peripheral presence there. Um, and, and a lot of it is, is for purposes of work rather than, than for personal kind of messaging and putting out personal posts, etc. But I think um, detox is, is a bit extreme. And, and um, if I were to use the addictions paradigm where um, when we kind of help people to reduce the substances that they are using or misusing or stop that. We, the, 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 the kind of very common refrain or mantra that we use is one day at a time. 
And so uh, detox brings with it is this kind of major connotations of I need to kind of go off this completely. And when, when people hear that, you are less likely to be successful because you it's, it's kind of a more longer term commitment. There are simple things that people can do on a day to day basis if they want to uh, kind of reduce their use. If they are not happy with their use of social media, think that they're using it excessively and it's interfering with their lives. There are simple things that people can do as well. I mean, can you tell touch. us a few of the simple things? So and doctor, we just have about two minutes to okay. go. And like you, you said, you could spend the whole day. We could spend the whole day. I'm sure yeah. our viewers also agree with me that we could spend the whole day. But just a few tips that so would help us. So, so simple things, okay, which we, we never realize are, are problematic. So all of us set our alarms on our mobile phone to wake up in the morning, right? So you set up the alarms. The alarm goes off. You wake up, you switch off the alarm. The first thing you have in your hand is a device, right? So get a real alarm clock so that you do the, not the first thing that you pick up in the morning is not the phone. Very simple. We don't even think about this. When you are uh, going to bed, if you want to charge your phone, if you are the kind of person who charges your phone overnight, then keep it in a different room. Don't keep it in your bedroom to charge. Keep it in a different bedroom. Uh, the world is not going to kind of Come to an end. Come to an end because, because you are, you are not, not at the other end of the phone, right? So charge it in a different room. Decide on, not on a detox, but decide on a, an hour in the day when you would not check your app. That's easier than kind of thing I'm going on a detox. Let's so basically it, um, it's like take small steps. Take small steps. Uh, another simple thing that works is your phone. You keep it face down so that you don't see every time there's a notification. Right. So keep your fa fa uh, the mobile phone face down. The other things that you could, th th and if you want to, uh, w what you uh, what you would call it, uh, you use a, a thief to catch a thief kind of a thing. You can. There are apps <laughs> which can block your apps, and there are apps which allow you to monitor your app usage. I'm so, so confused. My head is reeling. <laughs> But, but the but the you know the the takeaway from what he basically is saying that we need that break from social media from time to time. Am I no. right? Did I put it Abs absolutely right? But but think think in terms of s small, small morsels or small chunks or small steps rather Baby than making steps. A, yeah rather than making a before we run the marathon. Program. Absolutely. Baby start, steps before start we to is. learn to walk before you start running. Absolutely. Is what I say. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It has been lovely speaking with you. We would love to have you again on our show. I, of course, whenever it, it suits you. And we can speak about other addictions because there are so many out addictions out there that you know, are harming us. And um, we haven't heard um, anything today from you, but I'm sure after some time, we will have this whole list of questions that come up. So if there are some questions that I can send it to doctor, I will definitely do so. Thank you for joining us and thank you, doctor, for being Thanks on our show. Thanks for having me. It has been a pleasure. And all of you, keep safe, keep happy. And till uh, the next time, bye from all of us. Thank you again.